Peter uh, chapter 2, excuse me, uh, yes, 1 Peter, I'm sorry, 1 Peter, my bad. 1 uh, Peter chapter 2, and I want to begin reading in verse number 21. In 1 Peter chapter 2, begin reading in verse 21. And we'll read through, of course, the, the last verse, verse 25, but I'll, my text verse is coming out of verse 24. Uh, but we will begin reading in verse number 21. I'm just going to preach tonight a little simple thought, uh, looking at God's tree. Looking at God's tree. Uh, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. What was the example? What was the steps? The steps an example of suffering. Uh, suffering comes with this walk, folks. Uh, the walk of God doesn't come without suffering. I realize that we are in uh, a good day as far as physical sufferings for Christ are concerned. The apostles and, and during those days in uh, the early church, uh, of course, Fox's Book of Martyrs, they, they, those folks that uh, the trail of blood, our Baptist history folks bled and died that I could stand here tonight. But yet, uh, we are to follow the example of Christ. If you think that you're going to get out of this life as a Christian without any suffering, it may be physical suffering that God allows to put on you to bring honor to His name. It may be uh, mental anguish. It may be some type of situation. Uh, I don't know, but uh, you're not going to get out of this life as a Christian on Easy Street. Easy Street's coming. One day, all the troubles and trials are going to be over. Won't be no more problems, no more pain, no more pressure. That's why I thank God I'm looking and hastening for the trumpet. But until then, man that's born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. That's just the way it is, folks. Uh, we might as well uh, buckle our chin strap, so to speak, and, and get geared up, have our loins girt about with truth because the battle's on. But I'm glad with the battle we have somebody fighting for us, fighting with us, that will never leave us, and he equipped us with all the armor that we need. No armor for the back because he don't want us to turn and retreat. He wants us to keep going forward and keep pressing toward the mark, and we can by the help and grace of God. But there's his example. He said, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled. Now, this is a biggie for the Christian, and I'm not preaching this, but uh, when he was reviled, that means to abuse with hurtful language. When the accusations come, when they lied on him, when they badmouthed him, when he was reviled, listen, reviled not again. In other words, when they, when they abused him with hurtful language, he didn't come back and uh, get them back with hurtful language. Uh, they spoke of him. And they criticized him. They lied on him. Uh, they didn't like him, but he didn't retaliate with what they were dishing out. God help us in these days. Follow that example. I'm talking to the preacher. The hardest thing for the flesh to ever do is not take up for itself. That's the, I don't care who you are. That's the hardest thing for the flesh to do is not take up for itself. But anyway, that message may come New Year's. You never know. But he said in verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but uh, are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Let's pray quickly. Father, we thank you for what our hearts have been privileged to experience here tonight. Thank you for the fellowship. Thank you for our brethren and sisters in Christ. Thank you for the church. Thank you, dear God, for a place to come worship, for the place for the church to meet in. Now, Lord, we know this building is not the church. The, the church is the people inside the building. I'm thankful you give us a good, beautiful, warm, dry place to, for the church to gather together and assemble together. I thank you for that. Thank you for every song. Thank you for prayer time. Thank you for the Word of God. We ask you, Lord, to anoint us. Lord, have mercy on us. I don't want justice, Lord. I want mercy tonight. And I pray for the, the, the power of the Holy Ghost. Touch hearts. Say that near his tail tonight. Lord, if there's somebody in this building, you know every heart. Lord, we can fool each other. but We can't fool you. 
But Lord, if there's one in the midst tonight that just don't know you, that's lost, that Satan has a hand on, Lord, break the chain of bondage tonight. Save sinners. And Lord, reclaim backsliders. Encourage the church. We'll give you thanksgiving for it all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Looking at God's tree. Verse 24 again. I'll probably read it a couple more times before it's over. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Now, here at Christmas time, uh, we place a great deal of emphasis uh, on uh, uh, the tree or the Christmas tree or for some, the Christmas trees we put in our house. Uh, and folks, by the way, we we using this tonight. We're celebrating our u- the union with when deity met humanity, uh, and the virgin birth of Christ. And and I understand there's some some say people that says, well, a Christmas tree is pagan, and you shouldn't have one. And if you got one, you ain't right with God. Let me say something. Sometimes uh, you can carry things a little too far. Amen. For me to stand up here tonight and tell you you ain't right with God if you got a Christmas tree, that's the most idiotic thing a preacher could tell you. Now, if I come by your house and I see you bow to that tree, now we, we got a problem. But anyway, per, personally, I, again, I think we go quite a bit far and people say, well, you shouldn't have a tree. Well, folks, there's a spiritual message with a Christmas tree. Honestly, there, there, is a, there, is a, there is a spiritual message in the Christmas tree. Well, the colors, the traditional colors of a Christmas tree, green, red, right? Green and red. Well, green represents the continuation of life through winter. That's why we have as Christmas trees evergreens. Now, my evergreen don't, ain't real, but it looks like one. And said some of y'all, Amen. But the green, it symbolizes eternal life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Evergreen. I, I'm glad when he saved me, he didn't save me for a term. And then my salvation's wither, my salvation withers away and leaves. Thank God he saved me for eternity. I, this evergreen, praise God, I look at it and say, I'm forever saved. Amen. Thank God, I'm glad he gave them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of his hand, thank God. Paul said, I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So that green, it symbolizes a continuance of life through the winter time, folks. Then, Then the decoration, we see the red. We all already know what red symbolizes. Amen, it symbolizes the blood of Jesus. Shed for sinners at the crucifixion. Now, I read this. I, I could be wrong. If you know history better than me, I, when, when I read this, I, I, want, I want a disclaimer. I'm just telling you what I read here, okay? If I'm wrong, tell me out of church. It said that the first Christmas tree in America was placed by the German settlers in early 1800s in Pennsylvania. Now, I don't know if that's right or not. But I will tell you what I do know. I do know in America today that ladies especially take great pride, and I say that with all reverence, in their Christmas tree. They spend hours decorating it. I mean, they make sure everything's just right. I mean, they'll make sure it's just right. They have it. I mean, you know, they, they, they ain't a bald spot in it. Hello? Christmas tree now is Mama and Faith's job. We stay out of Christmas tree. But, I mean, it's got, you make sure it's just right and it's beautiful. And then, forget being humble about it because once it's done and it's perfect, you get your cell phone out and you begin to take pictures of it. <laughs> yeah, then, Thomas, you're right. Then get me <laughs> and all of a sudden, those, those pictures that you take, they're not for uh, your own personal photo album. They go on social media. Well, I finally got this old ugly tree. And knowing it ain't ugly, you want somebody to say, wow. <laughs> then if that ain't enough, you, all of a sudden you get into entertaining mood and you invite a bunch of people over for fun, food, and fellowship. Knowing all along, the only reason you're inviting them over so they can see your tree. 
You're not interested. Why? Oh, we ain't had no fellowship lately, honey. Well, oh, let's invite some folks in from the church. Let's have some good. Cra- All you want them to do is come in and ooh and ah of that tree. But there's one thing about it. No matter what we do with our Christmas tree, it's seasonal. Eventually, you yourself going to get sick of it sitting there. You put it up the day after Thanksgiving. Now, my mama always put hers up a week or two before Christmas, and he stood up past New Year's. Like the fellow one time, his wife said, you ever going to take them Christmas lights down? He said, that ain't how I want to spend my Easter Sunday. But the thing about it, with all the trouble and all the effort we go in with our Christmas tree, it's seasonal. And we take it down and we put it up and we really don't really think about that tree again until next December. But God's tree, (laughs) it's not seasonal. Uh, It is eternal. And it's still drawing men to it. We draw folks to our Christmas tree and we put beautiful lights on it. When people ride by, they'll see our tree and say, oh, look at that tree. And they might drive by again and look at that tree two or three times. But hey, January 1st, you know, it's gone. They'll never drive by. It's gone. But the tree that Jesus died on, thank God, it's still beautiful. And it's still drawing men. And it still has the power, thank God. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Who in his own self bears sins in his own his own self bears sins in his own body on the tree. I want to notice God's tree tonight. Let me give you just a few things about his tree by way of introduction. Number one, that tree was a tree of death. His tree was a tree of death. Folks, In Genesis 1, God created the trees. Do y'all believe in the sovereignty of God? Sure you do. He wouldn't be much of a God if he didn't know everything. Right? Folks, we we learn things. Things occur to us over time, and, and, and actually we die not knowing everything. We go through life learning things, but we die probably knowing less than we've ever learned in our life. But God is sovereign and He's all-knowing and there's nothing that's ever occurred to God. He's never sat on the throne and said, I got an idea. He knows everything. So in Genesis 1, when He created the tree, He knew that there'd be a tree that His Son would give His life a ransom for sinners on. He knew that as a tree there, that's going to be a tree earth that his son would give his life for sinners. Pay the debt on that tree. It's a tree of death. Not only is it a tree of death, it's a tree of desire. Now somebody said, a tree of desire? Well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me get this. I ain't going to get out of this message without quoting Isaiah 310. A tree of desire, it was the only way that God could bring a stubborn, rebellious generation of mankind to himself. Isaiah 53, 10, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It was God's desire that man be cleansed of his sin through the faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ dying at Calvary. God desired that tree, buddy. Yes, sir. God desired that tree. Don't ever, if you don't learn anything else this Christmas, it was God's design. It was God's desire. It was God's plan to crucify His Son for mankind. It pleased the Lord to bruise Him. (laughs) Folks, Pilate didn't do it. The Pharisees didn't do it. The Roman soldiers didn't do it. Hey, God did it before the foundation of the Lord. It was a tree of death. It's a tree of desire, a tree of desire. but it's also not only that, but it's a, a tree of deliverance. Amen. Amen. By His stripes we are healed. Right. <laughs> healed, folks. Years ago, and some of you again, it's history, and I know you know better than me. But years ago, there was a disease that spread through Europe, Asia, and Africa called the bubonic plague. I know y'all have heard of it. I can at least tell you that I've heard of it. Say amen right there. If you went to high school in the 80s and didn't learn nothing. 
it went through a, Europe, Asia, Africa, called the bubonic plague. It was highly infectious and had a high death rate among those it touched. I was told, I read, again, I'm, I'm, that's my disclaimer, that it destroyed a quarter of the population in Europe, and they called it black death. It came to humans through fleas and infected rats. I told y'all. <laughs> and as I think about that, I'm thinking uh, a disease, one disease... How it got in the, the infectious flea or the rat. It's amazing to me how it, how it wiped out a population. But y'all realize there's a disease far worse than the bubonic plague? And it's called S-I-N. And guess what? We, we, it blows our mind that, that the bubonic plague came through a, a flea or a rat. Folks, sin came to the world through one man. Wow. One man, by one man's disobedience. By one man. Hey, folks, we have born sinners, but I'm thankful there was a tree on Golgotha's hill, thank God, a tree of death and a tree of desire. But thank God, it's a tree of deliverance. It delivered me of the plague of sin that's in my life. Hallelujah. Thank God. Bless the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. That's good preaching. I don't care who's doing it. Because of the subject at hand, thank God. Thank God for God's tree. Yes. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. A tree of death, yes. A tree of desire, that blows my mind. But a tree also of deliverance. Now, thinking about Calvary, there's three things. Here's my message. I got three thoughts. I'm finished. Huh. Y'all thought I was slow. Three things about this tree. Number one, what do I see at God's tree? When I say that, put your mind at Calvary. What you've read in the Gospels, put your mind at Calvary. What do we see? Now, in our, in our trees, what do we see? We see ornaments. We see lights. And we see Christmas presents. We've got a bunch of Christmas presents around our tree. Ain't none of them got faith on them. Not a one. She ain't getting nothing. But when you come to your house, you know what I'm going to see? The very same thing. But what do we see when we look at God's tree? I'll tell you what we're going to see. <laughs> A Savior who would not be deterred. He went all the way. Carrying it. <laughs> Amen. Thank God he went all the way carrying it. Folks, I'll be honest with you. The song says, but it's a fact, he could have caught a legion. He could have caught a legion and got off the cross. He'd have still been God. He'd have still been perfect. He'd have still been good. Amen. Because he owed us nothing. Get that through your thick skull. When Jesus went to Golgotha's hill and he wouldn't be deterred and he wouldn't stop, he wouldn't because he said, I owe these people. Uh-uh. We owe him, praise God. He was paying a debt he didn't owe and a debt we couldn't pay. But thank God he kept going through all of the pain. Hallelujah to God. He would not be deterred. Amen. Bless the Lord. Boy, I'm glad he wouldn't stop. Boy, I think about sometimes, I hope I'm never put to the test. What in the world make, would make me stop? I can't, I can guarantee you this, a lot less than that. The first, the first, the first patch of that cat of nine tells said, Lord, let them all go to hell, come get me. I'm just being honest about it. Lord, they hate, but they hate us anyway. They ain't, hey, we, we, ain't, we ain't losing a thing by saving these people. We ain't losing nothing by saving these people, Lord. But oh, he took that. He took that, and don't get me wrong. Mel Gibson ain't got in his mind what he went through. Hey, man, he ain't got in his mind what he went through. I'm telling you, folks, he's more more than any man. Hey, he didn't look like a human being after he went through all of that, all the mock trials, all the lie, all the scourging, all the spits, all the plucking, all the cat and nine tail beating. He took the cross. He took the tree. He would not be deterred. But then, what else? What else do we see? 
We see a Savior. <laughs> Man, y'all help me. Uh, we see a Savior. The simplest things help me. I'm sorry. A, a Savior that would not be detoured. Then we see a sinner that would not be denied. <laughs> Think about it now. Get in your Bible. Get your mind on your Bible. A sinner that would not be denied. Who in the world? That re- hey, that man on the cross. On the right side. Christ in body before he died. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, y'all still believe Jesus is God? <laughs> somebody would have somebody might would have said, well, if the Lord Jesus would have known exactly who he was, he wouldn't have done that. He knew exactly who he was. He knew exactly what he'd done. He knows exactly all about him. And he's hanging on the tree. He's hanging on the tree. He would, not, he would not deny the tree. He's hanging on the tree. He's suffering on the tree. He's dying on the tree. Hey, they're spitting on him and gambling for his clothes. Uh, they're, they, they're mocking him, all that. And all of a sudden, here's an old wicked, vile sinner that brought nothing to the table, has nothing to offer, ain't going to start a mission work, ain't going to be a pastor, ain't going to be an evangelist, uh, ain't going to teach a Sunday school class. He's dying. He's on his deathbed. And he looks, whoa, he looks over there the Savior he said remember me uh, when thou comest into thy kingdom and the Lord said hey uh, today <laughs> today uh, I said today uh, thou shalt be with me uh, in paradise hallelujah that's what we see at his tree amen, amen. thank God a Savior that would not be detoured a sinner that would not be denied and get this the Lord said all oh, that come to me I'll in no wise cast them out Amen. hallelujah bless the Lord <laughs> thank God that's what we see in history we see a savior who would not be detoured we see a sinner that would not be denied get this we see a soldier who would not be deceived Right before Jesus gave up the ghost, that old centurion standing there and says, Hey, fellas, surely, truly, this was the Son of God. Hallelujah. The rest of them said, If you be the one, call them angels, call Abraham, get yourself down. And they said, They're talking crazy. He is him. I know he's him. <laughs> I'm glad I know it's him too. What else we see? I'm hurrying. I got two more. What else do we see at his tree? We, we see a savior that would not be detoured. We see a sinner who would not be denied. We see a soldier who would not be deceived. Listen to this. Listen. We see a scene that will never be repeated. <laughs> yes, sir. We see a scene that will never be repeated. Preacher, what are you talking about? Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. So Christ was what? Once offered to bear the sins of many. Once. Once. It's amazing to me. You know, I'm trying not to run rabbits. I just try to give them a message and go. It's amazing to me these folks that believe you've got to be saved ten times. I wonder why Jesus only had to die one time. Folks, that's a mockery. I know a lot of folks do the ignorantly. They've been taught ignorantly. And man, these, these men of God that's teaching these folks about look, falling from grace and losing your salvation, man, they're going to give account for that. You see, you don't, you, you, you actually believe people can't lose their salvation. No, once they really get it, I just believe there's a lot they ain't never got it. You ever get it, you got it. But they just some, you, you say, well, how's the old soul acting like that? He ain't ever got it. That's your answer. How's he live like that and God ain't chasing him? He ain't never got saved. He ain't lost nothing. He ain't never had it. See, that, we jump right over the truth. We jump right over the obvious. Yeah, ain't that right? We jump right over the obvious. It ain't that they lost it. They ain't never had it. But this scene here will never be repeated. Now, I, I ain't trying to make nobody mad, but that's why I don't have any crucifixes in my house. Now, if you got one, that's when you and God, but he ain't on the cross no more. He ain't on it no more. You can wear them around your neck. Of Christ on the cross, that's your business, but I don't because he ain't there. Yeah, he went there, but he didn't stay there. He paid the debt, got off. They buried him. He got up. 
Praise God. If you're going to wear something around your neck, pray wear a picture of an empty tomb. If you're going to have a picture in your house, it be of an empty tomb. Praise God. He, hey, he won the victory. It's been paid. They don't fuss at me after church. I just told you what I didn't have. Hello? You can have all you want to. That's when you're in the Lord. I don't have any pictures of naked angels on my, in my house either. You say, preacher, like you've seen that stuff, man, I have. I visited in houses, man, I'm sitting there looking at naked babies every, all, over, every, all over every wall. I'm, I, I, I'm telling you the truth. I'm sitting there going, man, bless them. And they honestly thought, I mean, I, I, ain't mad, I didn't get mad at them. I didn't fuss at them because, man, they thought they had something. Man, any angels don't look like that. I didn't mean to bring this message up with that. <laughs> Secondly, what do we see at God's tree? Now listen to this. What do we sense at God's tree? Out of what we saw. You got to watch you see now. Remember what we saw. We saw a Savior that would not be detoured. We got a sinner that would not be denied, a soldier that would not be deceived, and a sin that would not be repeated. Out of what we see, what do we sense? I tell you what I sense, the love of God. <laughs> I'll see unconditional love. I see John 3.16 personified. What else you see? I see the lack of man. I see the lack of man. There's none righteous, no, not one. Isaiah 64, 6, all our righteousness is filthy rags. All of our righteousness is filthy rags. And folks, don't, don't take what I'm saying as a compromise or as being a compromiser or, or excusing sin. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I'm going to tell you something right now. I've been trying to quit saying that. I'm going to tell you something. But I really do want to tell you something. <laughs> Who do I think I am, Patsy? Jumping on your bandwagon because I happen not to be doing what you're doing. When all the while you could turn the table on me and get on my bandwagon because I'm doing something you probably ain't doing. Now what I'm trying to say is this. All of our righteousness if they hadn't been righteous, imputed to me, put on me, placed within me, I'd be in a mess. I'm not going to only sin. I hate it. I hate sin. I hate my life sometimes. I hate myself sometimes. I make myself sick a lot. If you ever get comfortable sinning, something wrong with you. Amen. Folks, by the way, a child of God continuously repents. I ain't okay in sin. I hate it. That's why we got to repent. I don't want it in my life. I don't want it in my life. But sometimes it creeps in. A fault, a word. Huh? An action, an attitude, a reaction. When they reviled him, he reviled not again. I ain't got there yet. I just be honest with you. I ain't got there yet. I may, I may do it one time, but out of a hundred, I'll do it once. I'm just being honest with you. If y'all can't take honesty, you're in the wrong church. And I hate that because I hate the aftermath of it. Because, and I'm running rabbits, so I know it, but after the fact, I realized God's way would have been a whole lot better. God's way would have been a whole lot better. Now i got to forgive the offender and then get forgiveness of God. Matter of fact, I'm, I just jumped on in the boat with them. Are you listening to me? I mean, and that's a sinking boat, by the way. Year, a few years ago, we was down at Miss Harmon's, uh, Mr. And Miss Harmon's fishing. I, well, Kevin, was you with me? Bro, me, Brother Kelvin, and Brother Dickie, and Chris. Don't y'all tell that. But anyway, we was fishing. I'm serious, don't tell that. But we was all fishing, and they had a little boat. For three people left. I'm just kidding. We, they had a little boat, and y'all see me. I've had this physique all my life. Kevin's been his size all his life. He had, but Nicky's got littler, but Nicky was twice my size. We got in that boat. What was the limit on that boat? 300 pounds. Two people, 300 pounds. Nicky said, I fit both of them. <laughs> and them two squirts was walking, trying to get up, walking. Me and Nicky said, I'm like, yes, you know. <laughs> Finally, I said, I can't fish scared. You get me off. Can't swim, and this boat's going under. 
But you know what? For a while there, I, I was trying to blame it on the three sitting in front of me. And then I happened to look over where I was sitting. The water was just as high up where I was at, where they was at. You see what I'm saying? What I'm trying to tell you is this. <laughs> if you want, if you, hey, you, you want to do it God's way or your way, I promise you, you're going to jump in the boat with them, and that boat's sinking. You're going to have to bail out. You're going to have to bail out. And see, that's that, that's that much more energy. That's that much more fear. That's that much more having to do. Just, just, just do it God's way. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. And get this, he didn't even hold a grudge. Are you listening to me? Matter of fact, he, he's the one that said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. See, folks, it's like this. I used to get all the pieces because folks couldn't see things the way I seen them. And I had to understand, I can only see with the measure of perception that I have. And I can't expect anybody else to do, the, do, do otherwise. Some people, I hadn't got to where they are yet, spiritually, intellectually. And they, some people hadn't got to where I'm at yet. And we've got to understand that. Not everybody is walking as spiritual as you, and you're not as spiritual as others. I'm not talking about compromise. I'm talking about seizing things with the grace of God. Amen. Considering thyself, lest I also be tempted. I don't know how I got off on that. But we see the love of God. We see the lack of man. We see the longing of the Savior. Father, forgive him. He'd just been reviled. He'd just been cussed. He'd just been beat. They have gambling for his clothes. He'd been, his raiment had been stripped off of him. He's, he's hanging there completely naked in shame. And he says, Father, forgive him. That is a longing for fellowship with those that didn't deserve it. Whew. Yes, sir. Lastly, what did we see at God's tree? What do we sense at God's tree? Then lastly, what do we share at God's tree? Once we've seen what we've seen, once we have sensed what we've sensed, what do we go away from there sharing? We all share our cleansing. That tree, the blood shed on that tree washed me. Amen. We share cheer. We finally have the joy of the Lord. Amen. Comfort. Then we have a, a compelling. A compelling. What's happening? Now since we've seen the tree, we've sensed what's at the tree, you know what I want to do now? Go tell people about it. Amen. And what it can do for others. Hey, if, that, if what happened on that tree can save me, it'll save you too. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm thankful for God's tree. Oh, I'm thankful for God's tree. I'm thankful for what I see on his tree. I'm thankful for what I've sensed on his tree. And I'm thankful for what I get to share from what on, was on his tree. Thank God. Thank God for the sacrifice of God's tree. With all that we do for our Christmas trees to make them beautiful and make them desirable for folks to see and, and to like and to love, we put them up. Probably the last thing you're going to say when you put your Christmas tree up I'm glad it's over. I'm glad that's over. And you know what you're going to do? I, I dare say you'll even think about that tree the next day. But here's a tree. It's fresh every day. What happened on that tree is powerful every day. It draws every day. It'll be drawing until the trump of God sounds. If you don't know the Lord... If you've never been born again, you don't know what you're missing. And they've been, a, hey, the Bible says he's an unspeakable gift. I mean, you can't even describe him. He's an unspeakable gift. God help us. Hey, if you're going to hell, you don't have to because the price, the debt's been paid. Oh, nobody loves me. God loved you so much, he gave Jesus. 
He's only begotten Son, the one and only Son. And he put him on the tree. It pleased him to bruise him. If you're listening or watching by way of internet, why in the world would you not get saved? Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friend. Let's all stand together. Brittany's coming. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, the altar is open.